Hey, it's Dry Bear. And as we're all gearing up for Diablo 4's launch next week, we're all wondering how you can get the best experience out of the launch, the early access, and how do you accomplish the goals you're looking for out of the game in general. And the question I want to focus on today is what world tier or difficulty should you play on when you're playing Diablo 4? So that's what we're going to focus on today. But first, you should come hang out with me on my live stream. I'm live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. If you don't come hang out with me in the community, the next time you reach for and pick up a bag, it's going to make a screeching fart noise, but no one's going to be looking at you when it happens, so no one's going to believe you when you say that you didn't just rip. All right, let's dive into it. There are two available world tiers, and this is essentially a difficulty. There's a couple questions to answer here and some basic knowledge to be known so that we can dive into it. Before we get into the efficiency and the uh, speedrunning aspect of Diablo 4, let's talk about how you should go about deciding how you're going to play the game. Now, I'm someone who has played all kinds of games. I've worked on games for extended periods of time, and I've also been someone who's played a lot of grindy games. And my, my recommendation for people that are getting into grindy games, especially if you're not trying to be top, you know, rank 100, leaderboard, hardcore, whatever, is that you take good care of your first playthrough. The first time you play through a game like Diablo 4 is gonna be one a million, and then you're just gonna have to replay it over and over and over again until the point where it just becomes kind of monotonous and you're just a means to an end to get to end game so that you can play the end game and grind and gear and get better instead of just enjoying the story. So I always recommend and push people towards Playing however you want to play, take as long as you want to take the very first time, especially if you're not someone who cares about time frames and getting there first, then you can really enjoy it, and that is only going to happen once, and then you can worry about speedrunning and getting the most efficient route that you can for a uh, subsequent playthrough. So what I would recommend for your first playthrough, if you're just kind of playing, is to play on World Tier 1 Adventurer. I think is is very straightforward, it's very easy. If you just kind of want to blow through it. If you're someone who enjoys a challenge, I would recommend playing on World Tier 2, which is Veteran. I think this is actually quite challenging and pretty fun. Now, they've made some changes here. The monsters are higher HP, higher damage, but they've also made some AI adjustments. They'll be more aggressive. They'll re re reposition more aggressively, and they will also focus fire more often which is particularly tough with some of the projectile enemies like in Act 1, the goats that throw the spears. If you have all of them hard focusing one person, the DPS that you take is actually pretty high and pretty scary. And if you have a lot of melee mobs that are repositioning constantly and trying to get up on you, it can make it pretty hard. So not only are they more intense and more difficult to take down, they deal more damage, but also they are a little bit more aggressive and a little bit smarter in how they position and come in to kill you. So I think it's a fun challenge. If you're someone who likes to have a challenge in your game, play on World Tier 2, and you may have to gear up, and you have to think about how you spend your gold, and how you upgrade your elixirs, and you probably have to do some consumables and stuff, and really kind of figure it out. Uh, the benefit of World Tier 2 is that you have monsters give 20% increased experience. This is to make up for the fact that they take longer to kill and are overall harder and they drop 15% more gold. Once you finish the campaign and complete the capstone dungeon, which is this fixed difficulty kind of checkpoint, that's why it's a capstone, it's like a, it's like a graduation dungeon for you, uh, you'll be able to unlock World Tier 3. So this will be when you're done with the campaign, you've hit level 50, you've unlocked Paragon, you have all of your skill points, you're in like the very beginnings of early game, you can go to World Tier 3, and this is nice because it has a lot more experience for scaling up your Paragon. You can drop sacred and unique items, uh, Nightmare Sigils, so you can run uh, the endgame dungeons, Helltides, and Champion Monsters, which have all kinds of affixes and things like that. And lastly, you have Torment, which is the name of all of them in Diablo 3, but it's the name of World Tier 4 in Diablo 4. This one is 70 plus. This is where ancestral items and unique items can drop, and it gets really intense and really difficult. This is your end game grind. This is where you have your build, you're kind of pushing towards the end of your paragon, you're getting everything figured out, and you're going into this. So you will not have tier three or tier four available to you while you're doing the campaign and when you first make a character. So to repose the question for the first 
perspective, which is how do you enjoy the game, that would be my recommendation. Play tier one if you want to have a breeze, you want to go through it. Play tier two if you want to have a nice challenge and you actually want to feel the story. Because I feel like if you play on a higher difficulty, you tend to appreciate the boss fights and the challenges and the hurdles more and you have to prepare for them and it feels like a nice, I don't know, it's like the first time you play a Dark Souls or Souls-like game where you don't know the mechanics, you don't know how things work and you really have to try and put in the effort. I personally think that is very fun. Now let's talk about the, uh, the second perspective of this question, which is what is going to be the most efficient? If you're someone who cares about being in a high rank leaderboard, you want to get to endgame as fast as humanly possible, you want to spend as little time under uh, in the endgame state as you can so that you can maximize doing your grind, doing your nightmares, getting everything maxed out because uh, you don't really care about the story. You want to get there as fast as possible. So I have played to uh, 25 in uh, the early test and 20 in the, uh, the server slam for all of the classes. I've played on both difficulties. I've tested both quite extensively and I've been making builds for all the classes as well. And here's what I can tell you about the difference between Adventurer Tier 1 and Veteran Tier 2. If you can optimize your build excellently and you can play to at your best, then I would say Veteran is slightly faster than Adventurer. However, I would warn you that some of the classes cannot clear Veteran fast enough while leveling to make it worth it. Sorceress has an excellent leveling progression. Rogue has one of the best leveling progressions. They come online early, they do ridiculous damage, and they have great survivability for basic uh, world tier one, tier two progression. And there's also some druid builds that can get really strong. However, for Barbarian, and maybe even for Necromancer, I would recommend staying away from Veteran just because your clear speeds aren't gonna be worth it. The big thing is you only get 20% more experience for World Tier 2, which means that you have to be killing fast enough to warrant the difference and the higher difficulty on Veteran to make it work. And I would say not all classes can do that. And if you die at all, or you end up having to chug, 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 chug on bosses, or if you're just making up your build as you go along, I would recommend going Tier 1. It's going to be far faster. The 20% less experience is definitely worth it for the clear speed, the momentum, and getting through the gates. If you ever hit breakpoints where you are under a level, you can just go and quickly do a dungeon, or you can catch up in open world doing world events or even a world boss. Very easy to do, but I would say that Veteran is slightly faster if you have a highly optimized leveling build that is complete and focused. I'll have some leveling gu guides for all the classes on my channel coming in the next week. So those, I'll, I'll try to put the stamp of approval on all of those so that you, if you use one of them, they can run Veteran Tier 2 and be highly efficient at it. Other than that, I would recommend going World Tier 1. World Tier 1 is going to be far faster, far more efficient for leveling. But again, it all depends on what you're trying to get out of the experience, and I would urge you to cherish your first playthrough of the game, because if you intend to play Diablo 4 for a long period of time, then that first playthrough is going to very quickly fade away into the distance, and you're just going to be focusing on if there's seasons, the next season reset, how do I optimize, how do I get to end game, someone's going to power level me, and you're just going to forget all about the story. So cherish the first playthrough, but I know there are people out there that just want the uh, efficiency. And in that case, I would say unless you're 100% confident with a perfect leveling build, go for tier one. It is far more effective and efficient. There isn't any other major difference between the two. You'll be just fine uh, on tier one. And for most people, it will be a a faster grind through the campaign to get to your Paragon levels and start unlocking the endgame content. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content, link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.